Hi friends, I am back for finishing chapter three of Toys Go Out and starting chapter four. Because I'm on a certain time limit on YouTube, I can't go beyond 15 minutes. So that's why the chapters will be broken up sometimes. And we left off with Frank explaining what a cycle is and Frank is the washing machine and Lumpy is very nervous. And Frank is telling him to think of a dance. Think of the cycle like a dance. Think of it like a dance, says Frank. Then maybe you won't feel sick. But there's no music. So Frank begins to sing. Shuffalo, shuffalo, greasy little buffalo, toughy little buffalo, dance that buffalo shuffle with me. Dance, dance, prance, prance, dance that buffalo shuffle with me. Lumpy likes the idea of a buffalo shuffle. He does feel queasy during the agitation, but Frank keeps singing as Lumpy sloshes around. And by the first rinse cycle, when the clean, cool water pours in to wash the soap and peanut butter away, the buffalo is starting to enjoy himself. Dance, dance, prance, prance, he sings along with Frank, waggling his tail and clapping his front paws together. By the second rinse, he's kicking up his back legs and yelling, Toughy little buffalo, as loud as he can yell. And when the spin cycle arrives, he forgets completely that spinning makes his stomach feel funny. Whee! cries Lumpy. Look at me! Then the wash is over. The girl's father pulls him out to go hang on a clothesline in the open air. Goodbye, Frank, Lumpy calls as the basement door shuts. You have a wonderful singing voice. Thank you, calls Frank. It's nice to have someone appreciate it. Erg, says the dryer. Lumpy goes on another picnic the next weekend. Same pond, same sandwiches. It doesn't look like rain, though, so his chances of going home in a picnic basket are slim. When the little girl and her father are feeding the ducks and Lumpy knows they aren't looking, he, very cleverly, unscrews the lid of the jam jar and dips his nose and forefeet into the apricot goo. I am a sticky buffalo, he says to himself, and when I get home, I'm going to visit Frank. Sitting there in the sunshine on the picnic blanket, he begins to sing, shuffle-o, shuffle-o. Sticky little buffalo, toughy little buffalo, dance that buffalo shuffle with me. Dance, dance, prance, prance, dance that buffalo shuffle with me. So now, Lumpy loves the washing machine, Frank. Chapter 4, The Possible Shark. Plastic is going to the beach. The little girl told her specially this morning, and she's excited, though I'm not sure what to expect. Stingrays know all about the beach. Would you like me to tell you? asked Stingray. She and Plastic are playing checkers. Plastic says yes. The main thing is bigness. The ocean goes on and on forever. Is there clover? asked the one-eared sheep, who is watching the game with Lumpy. No clover, says Stingray, moving red. Grass? No, it's the ocean. Oh, well, sheep goes back to watching. Is it bigger than the pond, asked Plastic, moving black across the board. A zillion times bigger, answers Stingray. I can't wait, cries Plastic, and hums a happy hum. Beach, beach, beach. For a second, Stingray is quiet. She's wondering why she isn't going to the beach with Plastic, or even instead of Plastic, who, after all, has only lived with the little girl since last September. You won't like it, Stingray says, finally hoping, hopping red over one of Plastic's black checkers. Yes, I will. Beach, yells Plastic. No, you won't, Stingray repeats. The water goes down further than anybody can see. It's dangerous if you're not a fish. I'm a great floater. Plastic pushes her black checker onto the back of the board. King me. It doesn't matter, says Stingray. The beach is only safe for stingrays and salmons and goldfish. There are dangers in the bigness that only fish like me know about, she continues. Jellyfish made of grape and raspberry jelly and octopi with 1,100 legs and worst of all, garbage-eating sharks. What about the little girl? Lumpy has stopped concentrating on the game. She'll be okay. She's a good swimmer, answers Stingray. She's been to school. Beach, 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 yells Plastic King me. If you're not going to listen, Plastic, says Stingray, I don't know why you bother asking. And, she adds, moving away from the checkerboard, I don't feel like playing anymore. 
I'm listening, says Lumpy. What did you do when you went to the beach and met the garbage-eating shark? Um, says Jingwei, looking carefully at a fancy blue pillow that has captured her attention. Huh? Ha ba 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 Stingray nibbles on a bit of pillow fringe. Hey, did you really see a shark? asks Plastic, accusingly. Well, mutters Stingray, inspecting the opposite corner of the pillow with great interest. I just know about them, okay? Did you even really go to the beach? Plastic bounces up and down. Stingray crawls under the pillow so her friends can't see her face. Well, not in person. Beach, 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 yells Plastic again. Rolling around in circles, does anyone want to finish the checker game? I have a king. Shut up, Plastic, says Jingwei loudly. I hope you go to the beach and never come back. A few minutes later, Little Girl packs Plastic in a tote bag, along with a cotton blanket, sun protection, and some sand toys. Off they go for the day, happy as can be. Back in the bedroom, Stingray has crawled under the blue pillow and won't come out. Why didn't the little girl take me to the beach, she moans. I'm the one who sleeps on the high bed. I'm the one who's a fish. People like bounce at the beach, comforts Lumpy, sitting near a pillow. Plastic is bouncier than you are. Bouncers and floaters, adds the one-eared sheep, nibbling the pillow fringe. What? asks Stingray. Floaters. Toy boats, bat toys. Bat toys go to the beach all the time. Do you think the little girl likes floaters better than sinkers? Wonders Stingray. I'm just saying she takes them to the beach. I'm a sinker, says Lumpy. What about you, sheep? A sinker for sure, says the sheep. All this wool weighs me down. I'm a floater, says Stingray in a loud voice. Are you? asks Lumpy. Wow. I can float as well as plastic any day. Stingray spends the next hour thinking very hard. Truth is, she's never floated in her life. She has never even gotten wet. A little girl likes floaters, and a fish is a fish, and a fish should swim. What if the little girl sees plastic floating and loves her better than me, she wonders. What if she loves her better and starts to sleep with her on the high bed with the fluffy pillows and sends me to the dump and says, Stingray who? Whenever anyone mentions me. is a terrible bunch of thoughts. When no one's looking, Stingray sneaks down the hall to the bathroom. Tuck Tuck is there, hanging on a rod. Hello, says Stingray, as if nothing is out of the ordinary. Don't let me bother you. I'm just going to do my regular floating that I do. Your tag says dry clean only, remarks Tuck Tuck. So, says Stingray, she puts the plug in the bathtub, turns on the water and gets in. So that means don't take a bath. I'm a fish, says Stingray. I can float. She sits in the tub, feeling the wetness seep into her plush belly and flippers. No, you can't. Can too. Look at me. Your tummy is still on the floor of the tub. Mind your own business, snaps Stingray. I am doing my floating. The water is icy cold. Stingray tries to ignore it. She's waiting for her tummy to come off the floor of the tub, waiting for proof she's a floater. But her tummy stays right where it is. The water goes over her gills, then over her back. It goes over her eyes and covers the tip of her tail. Plastic lies in the trunk of the car, where it's very hot. Then the car stops and she's lifted out. The air is fresh and salty. The ocean really goes on and on forever. Plastic can hardly keep from wiggling, she's so excited. The little girl and her parents get their beach blanket and cooler and umbrella set up. They have paperback novels and a portable radio, too. The mother wears a baseball cap and a black bikini. She forces the little girl to put on suntan lotion, and the girl whines. The father runs down to the water and back, yelling about how cold it is. The girl drinks apple juice from a cardboard box. Then plastic is tossed right up in the air until she nearly touches the sun. She's rolled through tunnels of damp sand and comes out the other end. She's the center of a game called Keep Away. She's perched on top of a large sand castle. She's tossed into the surface of the ocean where she floats upon the waves and floats and floats for longer than she'd like floating all by herself. And then she is eaten. An animal with musky wet fur takes plastic in its jaws with a sudden snap. She can feel the sharp teeth and the floppy warm tongue. The creature makes soft grunting noises as it paddles out of the ocean and onto the sand. Plastic tries to wriggle free, but it has her tight. 
Is it a shark, Plastic Wonders? Does it think I'm a tasty piece of garbage? Okay, boys and girls, before I show you the picture, what do you think it is that has plastic in its mouth? Think of what kind of animals really do come to the beach with their families. Hmm. And if I give you some more clues, you'll definitely get it. They bark. They love shaking off their water. There. That's the possible shark with plastic in its mouth. The possible shark trots across the sand, wagging its tail. It heads a long way down the beach. Again, plastic tries to get out of its grip, but it has a good hold. It trots and trots, occasionally poking her with its tongue. Then the possible shark drops plastic onto a pile of seaweed, pins her down with one enormous paw, and begins to chew. In the tub, stingrays completely underwater. At the beach, a possible shark tooth pops plastic's rubber skin. In the tub, stingrays soak through her sawdust insides. At the beach, the air whizzes out of plastic until she is soft and squashy. Stingray tries to lift a flipper to pull herself out, but the water makes her so heavy she can't move. The possible shark tries to swallow plastic. Stingray, help! Plastic, stop! Help! Stop! But Tuck Tuck can't move, and the possible shark isn't listening. Plastic is stuck in the back of the possible shark's throat. Very uncomfortable. Gog, gog. The possible shark chokes, coughs, chokes again, coughs, and spits plastic out onto a pile of seaweed. Plastic knows she has to get away fast, but what can she do? She's halfway deflated, very unbouncy. The possible shark licks its chops, but swoops in for another chomp. Plastic turns her body so her puncture hole is pointing right at its face. Then she squeezes her rubbery skin together as tight as it will go pushing her last bit of air out the puncture with a loud, farty noise. <laughs> the possible shark is confused. It pulls back and makes a whimpering sound. Then it trots away with its tail between its legs. Yippee, thinks Plastic. I can't stay here, though. It might come back and eat me later. The seaweed around her is gray-green and scraggly. There are clumps of it all over the beach, drifting in and out as the waves skim across the sand. Plastic checks to be sure no one's looking at her and slips under a big piece. Rolling is hard with so little air inside, but she uses all her strength and moves gently forward and around until she's wrapped thoroughly in seaweed. Then she waits until she hears a big wave crash on the shore. As the ocean water rushes toward her, Plastic rolls along the edge of the water pretending that the wave has caught this unsuspecting and surprisingly round blob of seaweed and merely happens to be pulling it along. With each crash of the breakers, Plastic rolls a bit further in the direction of the little girl and her family. Once, a wave really does catch her, and she bangs up hard against a big rock. Once, a small crab waves a mean-looking claw in her direction. And once, a possible shark of a different nature short legs, curly fur, sniffs her with frightening curiosity. With tremendous effort, Plastic keeps moving until she hears the little girl's voice. Then she slips out of her seaweed cover and bold face rolls back to the beach blanket as fast as she possibly can roll. Stingray is soaked through the cold water and so heavy she cannot move. From the bottom of the tub, she hears a sound. Wobble, glub, glub, mangle. Fortunately, her eyes are on the top of her head, so she can see what's above her. Lumpy and the one ear sheep are sitting on the edge of the tub. The rushing sound of the tap makes it impossible to make out what they're saying. And though she's glad to see them, Sing Ray can't think how they will rescue her since both of them are sinkers. After hating her friend all day, she wishes Plastic were here. I was mean to her, thinks Sing Ray, and now she's gone to the beach and might never ever return. I'm a sinker, and a stinker, too, and if I rot and drown and dissolve in the tub, it's probably better than I deserve. Rubble, glub, glug, mangle, Stingray hears again, and then silence. Lumpy has turned off the tap. And I'll stop here, boys and girls, to finish chapter four another day and see what happens with Stingray in the tub. Bye for now.